Hello, I'm David Kerr and you are watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has strongly condemned Wednesday's storming of the US Capitol by supporters of President Donald Trump. In a statement issued on January the 6th, the President of the Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Jose Gomez of Los Angeles, stated, quote, this is not who we are as Americans. He added that the peaceful transition of power is one of the hallmarks of the United States and urged his fellow Americans to recommit to the values and principles of democracy and to come together as one nation under God. Archbishop Gomez concluded his statement by entrusting the US to its patroness, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that she may, quote, obtain for us wisdom and the grace of a true patriotism and love of country. The violent unrest at the US Capitol led to one protester being fatally shot by law enforcement, one police officer later dying from wounds sustained at the hands of the mob, and three other people dying of apparent medical emergencies. Meanwhile, 80 arrests were made throughout the day and night. The legalisation of abortion in Argentina will only deepen divisions within the South American country. That's the warning from the country's bishops after a new law legalising abortion was introduced on December the 30th. The pro-abortion legislation was initiated by Argentinian President Alberto Fernandez earlier this year and was ratified by both chambers of the Argentinian National Assembly last month. The new law legalises abortion up until the 14th week of pregnancy. The bishops of Argentina say they appreciate the efforts of those deputies and senators who, quote, bravely stood up for life. They also committed themselves to continuing to defend life in order to build, quote, a just and supportive nation where none is discarded. Up until now, abortion was only legal in Latin America and Cuba, Uruguay and Guyana, as well as in Mexico City. Meanwhile, the Mexican actor and director Eduardo Verastegui has also decried Argentina's legalisation of abortion. Speaking via Twitter, Mr Verastegui said he loved Argentina, was personally hurt by the country's decision to legalise abortion and accused President Fernandez of having, quote, made a pact with death. He also suggested that legalising abortion will kill more Argentinians than Covid. Police in Indonesia are investigating the suspected murder of a Catholic seminarian who was found dead in a ditch in the eastern province of Papua on Christmas Eve. Zagi Sil was training for the priesthood for the Diocese of Sarong Manokwari. He was due to be ordained to the diaconate next year. His friends have described him to local media as a courageous person who cared about people's needs and was not afraid to raise his voice in the name of justice. Indonesia's National Commissioner for Human Rights is now calling upon police to, quote, quickly investigate and find the perpetrators of the murder. The United States is calling for the release of the Chinese journalist Zhang Zhan after she was sentenced to four years in prison for reporting upon the Chinese government's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. The 37-year-old was found guilty of the crime of picking quarrels and provoking trouble on December the 28th. The next day saw US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo describe those court proceedings as, quote, a sham prosecution and conviction. He called upon China to release Ms. Zhan immediately, adding that her case has again shown that the Chinese Communist Party will, quote, do whatever it takes to silence those who question the party's official line. Ms. Zhan, who is a practicing Christian, is the first citizen journalist to be sentenced for reporting on the pandemic in China although at least 47 other journalists are currently in detention in China for their coronavirus reporting. Catholics across the United States are being encouraged to observe a nationwide prayer vigil from the night of Thursday, January the 28th to the morning of Friday, January the 29th, in order to mark the 48th anniversary of abortion being legalised across the US. In most years, the annual prayer vigil takes place at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C., Due to COVID-19 restrictions, however, this year the vigil will be virtual. It will begin at 8pm with Holy Mass offered by Archbishop Joseph Nauman, who is the chairman of the Committee on Pro-Life Activities for the US Conference of Catholic Bishops, or USCCB. After the Mass and throughout the night, Holy Hours will then be led by bishops from various dioceses around the US. Each Holy Hour will be streamed via the USCCB website. The prayer vigil will then conclude at 8am on Friday morning, with Holy Mass offered by Archbishop William Laurie of Baltimore. The bishops of Scotland say they are perplexed by the Scottish government's decision to close churches as part of the country's latest COVID-19 lockdown. The month-long lockdown means no public masses will be offered in Scotland until at least February the 1st. Funerals and marriages can take place, but with a limited number of attendees. The Bishops' Conference of Scotland are describing that ban on public religious services as, quote, arbitrary and unfair. 
Given the evidence, they say that public safety measures in churches has proven effective in preventing the spread of COVID-19. They also note that a parallel national lockdown in England won't see churches in that country forced to close their doors. The Scottish bishops are now calling upon the Scottish Government to reconsider their decision. The evangelical Christian preacher Franklin Graham has taken to Twitter to criticise a member of the US House of Representatives who concluded his prayer upon the first day of Congress with the words Amen and a woman. The prayer was led by Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver from Missouri. In his tweet, Mr Graham pointed out that the word amen has nothing to do with gender, but is instead the Hebrew word for so be it. Representative Cleaver is a United Methodist minister and a former mayor of Kansas City in Missouri. Finally to Bangladesh, where a young Catholic convert has become the first ethnic Koch to be ordained to the sacred priesthood. According to the AsiaNews.it website, 32-year-old Father Bijwati Bernard Borman was ordained, along with five other men, at St Mary's Cathedral in the capital city of Dhaka on December the 30th. Father Borman and his family are Koch, one of the oldest ethnic groups to be found in northeast India and Bangladesh. Approximately 117,000 ethnic Koch are Bangladeshi. Father Borman was born and brought up as a Hindu, but he and his brother converted to Catholicism while students at a Catholic school. Last month, while still a deacon, he also baptised both his parents. Father Borman credits the example and influence of Italian priests from the Pine Missionary Order for both his conversion and his vocation. Congratulations, Father Borman. Ad miltos annos. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news headlines from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.